Hello, my name is Kerry Williams, and I work with the Graduate School here at Sunset International Bible Institute. Today, I'm going to share with you a brief devotional from the book of Psalms, particularly Psalm 100. And one of the things I love the most about this very brief but profound poetic writing is that it focuses on thankfulness. And what I really love about thankfulness is, you know, it's one of those human qualities that really is the most noble and makes us our best selves. When you read Psalm chapter 100, we start and it says, make a joyful sound to the Lord, all you lands, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with thanksgiving. Know that the Lord, he is good. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. You know, there's something pure about gratitude. Something that is so very, very profound and it thrills our souls. One of the things that I love most in life is holiday times. And it's not because I get presents. You know, as a dad, I don't get as many presents as everybody else does. But I really love more than anybody else. I love to give my wife Lenora things because she has always, no matter how much older we become, she never loses that childlike excitement. When Lenora gets something that she really wants, so I kind of listen and hear the hints all year long to try to find that thing that she's really going to love. But she is so excited. And when she opens it up, and we call it the happy clap. She just claps her hands together and she's just, just exploding with energy. And even though she's the one receiving that gift, that expression that glorious expression of gratitude that's coming from her face and her expression, her, her voice, her hands. It just thrills my soul. And everybody in the room, everybody's happier. Everybody's, everybody's day is brightened because there's something pure, noble, and glorious about gratitude. This tells us that when we become before the Lord, we need to do so with gladness and with thanksgiving in our hearts. You know, we have every reason in the world to be thankful for everything God's done for us, even in this strange time. Because I think back on a great story, there was a World War II veteran named Eddie Rickenbacker. And Rickenbacker was a captain over a B-17 bomber crew out in the Pacific. And he could be seen in his later life he would walk every Friday night down the beach in Florida and out onto the pier, and he'd just feed the seagulls. I mean, it was a routine, a ritual every single week. And when asked about it, he would tell people his story. In 1942, his B-17, they'd gotten off course and they were running low on fuel. They didn't know what to do, so they ditched in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And he and his crew had to survive on two rafts, the longest of which was nine feet, and they survived out on the open sea for a month before they were rescued. And he tells the story of how miserable this experience was. The heat was oppressive. They ran out of their rations after just a few days. They were being rammed at, by sharks and it was impossible to sleep in these cramped little rafts knowing that if you were to fall over, if the raft were to fail, that imminent death was waiting all around you, swimming all around you in the water. But he tells of what he calls their salvation. One day when they were just at the peak of exhaustion and the sun was beating down on them and they'd given in many of them to despair, Regenbacher was closing his eyes and he felt something on his head. And he knew instantly what it was. It was a bird, a seagull. And he didn't understand it. They were out in the middle of the sea. You couldn't see land in any direction. 
But this lone seagull had landed on him and he knew. And the men in the raft with him looked across and their eyes were wide with anticipation because they knew that bird meant survival. That bird, if he could catch it, meant that he would live. Well, the rest is history. He caught the bird and they ate its flesh and they used parts of it for bait and they caught fish that sustained them as they went forward. And so all of his life, he would walk down to the pier along the beach every Friday night and in gratitude that he was alive, he would feed the seagulls. You know, we have so much more to be grateful for. And when this is all over, one of the weirdest things about this pandemic is people who've gone to church their whole lives. We are worshiping from home or other circumstances. And it's so strange to us, but all of our lives, we've had a ritual. Every Sunday, we've gathered together and we've partaken and remembered the Lord through his supper. We've listened to lessons, we've sang, we've admonished one another in fellowship. But I wonder if maybe we've taken it for granted and forgotten what the, one of the primary purposes is for it, that we gather together. And we, that, that activity is not just a, a meaningless ritualistic thing. It's more than that. It's a memory. It's a celebration of what we're thankful for, that someone saved us. And we, perhaps we've taken it for granted. Well, what I love about Psalm 100 is it talks about going into his presence with thanksgiving, exuberance, joy, and excitement. And I look forward to the day and I pray that when, if it's in May or in June or wherever it may be, when churches open their doors again and we're no longer on video with one another and we're all back together. I look forward to the day when we will have more excitement, more appreciation, more exuberance in our thanksgiving and gratitude than ever, ever before. And with this, I think of the text in Ephesians chapter five. In Ephesians chapter five, 18 and 19, this is a passage we've often used to make points about what kind of worship we should offer unto God because it talks about singing to one another. And, and that's, a, that's a reasonable application of the text. But in context, he's saying something even more. In verse 18, he says, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. See, he's making a contrast. He says, don't be drunk, don't be intoxicated with wine, that's what worldly people do. He says, you be filled, you be intoxicated with the Spirit of God. And then when you look at the next verse, it, it fits perfectly because it says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. And what I truly love about this text is it's describing what really drunk people do. People who are drunk with wine, you see them stagger down the street and they're singing, you know, 49 barrels of this or whatever it may be. And they're, they, they've given up on propriety and they're just singing it at the top of their lungs because they're drunk, they're intoxicated with wine. But he says, when you're together, don't be intoxicated with wine. Don't be like the world, but be intoxicated. Be filled. Be filled with the Spirit. And when you are, he said, this is what's going to happen. You'll sing to one another. You'll be exuberant and excited with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And he says, singing and making melody in your heart. Why? Giving thanks. Always for all the things that God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, our gratitude is what makes us exuberant. It's what that gratitude, that thanksgiving for what he's done, 
should fill us, should cause us to cry out. And so I hope that when we all get back together in weeks or months or whenever it may be, that we'll never ever take for granted that opportunity we have week after week to thank the one who sacrificed himself. And in that, it should cause us to be filled with his spirit of joy for what he's done. And with exuberance, excitement, ingratitude, sing to one another. I pray that our singing, when we're back together for the first time, it might be an experience like none of us have ever had before. The excitement, the joy, the gratitude, thanksgiving. Let's pour that out. And every day, even while we're going through this epidemic, remember the Lord is good. He's taking care of us. He continues to take care of us. And we've always got so much to be thankful for and therefore to be excited about, to come before our God with thanksgiving. God bless you. We love you. We hope that everything will continue to go well, that you'll stay happy and you'll stay safe and you'll stay healthy.